Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today I have a YouTube video, sorry for the spacing. I've actually been trying to upload a few videos, but I keep getting trouble with the data uh, transfer uh, between taking my videos and uploading them to YouTube, so um, uh, I let them know about it and hopefully it's been fixed now. So without further ado, we actually have a more rare piece of Swiss surplus here. Um, Swiss surplus is actually kind of relatively common because they didn't fight in any war, so they didn't have any high attrition rates. Um, but this is actually a pretty rare piece of Swiss gear, and this is the rubberized uh, raincoat. Now, this type of raincoat came out in the late 50s and was used through the 60s. Um, they weren't... Um, the reason they're kind of rare, even for Swiss stuff, is the fact that not a lot of them were made, um, and a lot of them weren't made because they... Um, were, for one, expensive to make in the, the 50s and 60s because they're made out of unusual Swiss fashion, the highest quality materials, and with the nicest manufacturing available. So they're made out of super great materials and super fine craftsmanship uh, went into these. So they're expensive. So they're not hard to find. And they were only made to be issued to sentries, uh, dispatch riders, and they were available for private purchase by officers. Um, and this one uh, appears to be an officer model. Uh, I'll get into that here when we get on the inside. Now, I actually own two of these. One doesn't have the liner, which is how you normally find them. It's hard to find them with the liner, um, but they came with a wool liner. Um, but this one has a wool and silk liner, which is what leads me to believe it's a officer one. But we'll get into some of the specs of it here now. Now, it's about a knee-length trench coat style. Um, it's made out of PVC rubber, a really nice PVC rubber for as old as this is. Um, it is textured um, so that uh, when it rains on it, it doesn't shine as much. That's why it's textured. Um, the bottom snap on the front here, uh, it has a snap on the front. It is a button closure for the most part, but this bottom snap is here on the front. So that way for the motorcycle dispatch riders, you could undo the snap and it would give you some more access to have your legs up to ride your motorcycle. Um, without putting as much stress on the jacket, or if you just wanted to sit down, you could undo the snap, and it allows you to sit down a little bit more comfortably. Um, the rest of the closures, though, are button closures, and you can see the Swiss buttons here. Um, they are plastic, these buttons are. Um, they are um, basically plastic versions of the brass ones, though. They're exact copies, so they still have the eyes on the back. Um, the Swiss cross in the uh, circle with uh, the little striations behind it is how they did all their buttons. Um, the pockets here have a big storm flap on them, and then they also have two little safety flaps here. Um, the pockets are PVC uppers, and then once you get lower, it's the cotton. Um, so the wrists uh, were made in a separate factory um, because they... Uh, well, not a separate factory, but made separate from the rest of the jacket because they have a little scrunchie in it to keep the wind out, again, with the same snap. Um, so then this the uh, cuff assembly would be made, and then it was see, uh, stitched and seam sealed to the jacket. This is one of the uh, seams here to keep moisture out. Um, the cuffs are adjustable with two buttons. Uh, I have it on the closer of the... the uh, there's the other button, so if you wanted to make the wrist cuff a little bigger, you could, but I like it on the closer one because it fits me a little better. Um, this holds in the liner sleeve, this snap here. Um, same on the other side. The uh, collar here um, does have full storm flaps, so it has storage buttons right here uh, for the bottom portion of the collar. Um, but if you wanted to, you can wear it up. If the wind is really bad, there's the buttons for it, um, which you can see are the standard size buttons where these are the small ones. Um, it does have shoulder uh, pads that do lift up and route all the way through. Um, if you wanted to route your equipment uh, through these, you could if you had a web harness. Um, it does have belt loops on the sides for your pistol belt um, or cartridge belt or anything like that. So you could have that and then you could route your suspenders under there. Um, it has epaulets up here for any of your rank or if you just wanted to route your equipment through these, you could as well. Um, the collar does stand up if you want it to, to pr offer some extra protection. Um, very thoughtful here compared to most rain suits. Um, 
The armpits on this one are very well constructed, unlike most rubberized rain suits, to give you a lot better movement. There's two extra gusset pieces, and then it is also detached. Um, so it has a vent here, an armpit vent, uh, to vent uh, moisture if you uh, start to perspire or not, because these do not breathe as well as Gore-Tex. Um, but they are a lot, uh, they have a lot more longevity and are a lot um, more waterproof. Um, so now we'll get on to the inside here. Um, start down at the bottom. This is what the underside of the rubberized material looks like. It's this kind of cotton denim. Uh, it's kind of a charcoal gray color. Here's one of the seams on the inside. As you can see, despite this jacket being 50 years old, the seams are in immaculate condition, which leads me to believe this is either a brand new or little used jacket. Um, the liner here, the whole parka is fishtailed, as you can see here. Um, it is held in place with snaps if you wanted the fishtail to go up even more, like I said, for um, riding the motorcycle. The dispatch riders would have liked that. So uh, you could straddle your motorci motorcycle easier. Um, the wool liner is a that same. The whole jacket is that Swiss gray green color. They match the PVC to the wool uniform of the time. The um, wool in here is the traditional Swiss gray green. It is finished. It is thinner though than the normal tunic, which is how all of the um, liners came. They were thinner wool than the regular tunic, and you would normally get a size up from what you normally wore. Because uh, you would wear your tunic under this in cold weather. So, with uh, the wool tunic that you're wearing and the wool liner this has, it's good to go up a size. So, uh, it doesn't get it tight around your midsection. Uh, but this is an even lighter wool than what was normally issued in it. And it seems to be uh, of just as nice a quality, though, at least. Uh, it is a size 52. This is the only marking on the liner. Uh, normally, they have a maker mark on them. Uh, or something like that. The jacket does have the maker mark that the code anyways in the size. It's hard to see. It says 52. Um, and this says 120 or 128 or some or 129 or something similar like that. And the top one I cannot read. Um, but I'm guessing that's the year it was made and stuff like that. And the factory number. Um, but the liner does button in with all of these little buttons around here. Um, there are spare buttons. Both one large and one small. On each side of the fishtail at the bottom center of the jacket um, and uh, the sleeves which makes me to believe that this is an officer coat is the sleeves are silk lined with this kind of gray green uh, silk with white stripes in it um, the other one that I've seen that had the wool liner had wool sleeves in it um, and was a little bit thicker than this wool uh, which I think is the standard one because it had the tag in it um, for the factory that matched the jacket. So, hopefully this video can upload, finally, and uh, I'd very much like to get your guys' feedback on it because I like uh, rubberized rain gear, as I've said before, over Gore-Tex. Um, because it's, it for one, Gore-Tex soaks through, and it's just um, very loud and swishy. It does pack better, though, I will give it that. But I like rubberized stuff because it's not going to soak through. It's going to last a lot longer. You can double it as a shelter. It can catch rainwater and you don't have to worry about hurting it or anything like that. Um, and as long as you put silicon oil on it, which is why this one's kind of shiny. I recently oiled it uh, to keep the PVC from getting dried out and cracking. It'll last you forever. These PVC uh, rubber jackets will last you literally multiple lifetimes. And they'll never wear out. They're always good. And they're actually kind of fashion forward. If you're a businessman or something like that, these are kind of the way to go. Uh, I think if you're looking for style and function. So I'd very much like to uh, wonder if there's anyone out there like me who prefers rubberized over Gore-Tex. And if you're willing to comment uh, what you use. And um, hopefully uh, there are some people out there like me. Or maybe I'm just the only one and I'm a little fucking weird. I don't know. But uh, if you do like rubberized stuff or have any general questions on use, care, maintenance of rubberized stuff, feel free to drop that in the comments. I'll do my best to help you out with your problem. Uh, if you have any user feedback or, or knowledge about any of these or any other types of rubberized rain coats or rain suits, feel free to leave that in the comments as well. And uh, maybe I'll buy one if you have one that I really think is worth buying. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.